<sighs> Hello, YouTube. I'm sorry I haven't making a video in a while. It's just been a very stressful time for me. I haven't been feeling like doing it in forever. And I'm sorry about that. I know it's been several years since I have actually uploaded anything, like two or three. I had some people in the comments say that they wondered where I was at. I hope I didn't make you give up hopes on me. And I had a lot of trouble with my computer. I lost all my stuff and had to work it back. It's been a very stressful time with me. I'm gonna try to see if I can get myself back on track with these videos and try what I can. I'm gonna make a few and I might not for a few months for make another one, but I'll try what I can. So let's get started. You remember when I made that video, the most recent one on my channel, about that one 1 1.6 inch LCD screen? I made that one because nobody would. Nobody else made the tutorial on it. So I technically out the only one who did. But I need to update that video. Because I have found a better way to use that display. And I don't think I explained it well enough in the last video. So I'm going to try to do a better job this time. I also got a better library that should work better. So, um... Here is the display. You may remember from the last video. It's a 1.6 inch SSD 1283A LCD screen. One twenty. It's one hundred forty by one hundred forty resolution, and it's sunlight readable lens on the top of it. With also full three point three volt and five volt compatibility. This display is usually found on AliExpress that came from China, but there are not many driver codes for this, and not much information about it. It took me a long time to find uh, stuff for this. According to the data sheet, this display can handle up to 132 by 132 pixels, but this is fit to 140 by 130. And I have actually discovered a better library to drive this one than I used before. So let's see what I got on here. So, um, oops, um, first, now this new library is called, it goes by two names. It, it, it can either go by Arduino underscore GFX, if you hurry up and load, or it can go by GFX underscore library for underscore four underscore Arduino. It goes by two names. If you look for it on GitHub, it goes by Arduino GFX. But in the Arduino library manager, it goes by GFX library for Arduino. I'm just going to type in GFX on here and... Um, Oops, hang on, gotta, gotta type a little more. The creator person who made the library, why is it not? Um, hang on, I had to extra search for it. It's being finicky for some reason. And there's so many libraries that have similar naming conventions. So, the person who, come on, why is it showing up? Because it's not going as good as I was hoping it would. Um, give me a few minutes, please, I'm sorry. I know I'm not good at this, but I'm trying. Or this one right here, by the by the creator Moon on Our Nation. This is the library one right here, and it so happens to have a different. It has a larger selection of displays supported than any other library. TFT, ESPI, Adafruit, GFX, stuff like that. But this library has more support for displays. Although it's not the fastest library, it's still pretty decent. And it also has the ability to make a display buffer that can that is larger than any other library. So you just gotta click install button on here at the latest version, it should be okay. Then you close the library manager. We're gonna open up the first example. Well, not the first example. I got a lot of libraries on here already. Gotta give me a little bit of scroll for it. I got a lot of libraries. Um, hang on a little bit. I know I'm not really a good video maker, but I'm trying my best. This one right here, oops. We're gonna do this one right here, PDQ graphics test. And that is going to be the example we're gonna use to drive display. 
I will be using the ESP32 controller to drive this. This library has specialized optimization. Will not, it will not work with standard hardware mode though. You have to use special optimize thing. I don't know why it won't even work at all on the controller. So we can just um, ignore most of this setup stuff on here. This is for other boards that are, they like for predefined boards. We just skip all this. Um, um, hang on a minute, I'm sorry. Skip all that. And here is our pin definitions. We will go down to where it says, right here, where it says, if it's just regular ESP32, You can change these these free pins up here to be any type of pins you want. For my pin, I'm gonna put chip select on 25, data command on 26, and reset on 27. I will not be using backlight, so I will just set it to a negative one. And there's my pins. We gotta scroll down over over here to select our. Let me find the right one. It's right here. This here is, it's already set up right here. That is the bus we named that right here. You can use whatever, you can use whatever board you want that is supported by this library, if you want to. And that is for parallel interface. And this is, that's the display buffer. And now, here is where all displays are. We have to scroll down, it default selects this one right here. We have to comment this one here out. Then we go down until we find SSD128-3A. Sorry I'm still fiddling with the camera. I'm trying to look at the camera and my screen at the same time and then... So this one right here is the one we want to uncomment right here. If you need to, you may rotate it using this number here. Some displays drivers default it to be upside down. I usually go by the bottom of the display as where the main driver chip is. So technically it can be upside down in some cases. On this board here, it is mounted upside down depending on how the pin header is soldered. So I'm gonna set my rotation value to two, unless I forgot which one it sets itself to. And then we're gonna go down and make some tweaks to the library and the setup function. This part here is optional, setting the SPI interface speed. This display, I believe, can handle up to 80 megahertz. I don't remember, I'm trying in a while, but um. Now this is 80 megahertz. You may be wondering why it says 7999 blah, blah, blah. It's something to do with how Arduino works. You have to subtract one from the actual speed value. I don't know why. It's something weird quirk with like the library and the uh, Arduino software. I don't know why, but you got to take away one from the actual speed you want. And now I'm going to go down a little more and tweak a delay function. Since it's pre-designed to have this delay here, so it restarts the entire code from the beginning after an entire minute. I'm gonna set it for five seconds. This part is only optional. You don't have to set it if you don't want to, but if you do, set it to whatever value you want. And I'm gonna see if I need to make any modifications to this. Okay, I think I'm good. So make sure you have your ESP32 board selected or the board that you want and your device settings. But just so you know, this this ESP32 driver has had some updates in the past, so now it has upload, uploader tool selection. The FTDI adapter is the most commonly used one, so use that one unless you have a, a specialized JTAG adapter for those controllers. Now I'm gonna start by doing a pre-compile on this because I have to configure the wiring on my board. As I had it wired up for a different display. So I'm just gonna set the iPad down. Well, just for a few seconds. So I'll try to go as fast as I can. I gotta rewire my breadboard over here.
So you, you can skip this part a few seconds up if you want to. Okay, now we're waiting for this code to compile. Yes, it takes a while using the EXP32. I'm going to go over the wiring on this controller to the display, and then we can probably tell some features about this library. So here, this, this is the 5110 interface, meant to be named after the, the Nokia 5110 LCD screens. Although the little breakout board for those use a different interface. You start with your positive supply from right to left, then your ground, your chip select, reset, and then data command, your data clock, and your backlight. The backlight must be connected to positive, it's not, it's off by default. The wiring from the board, hardware SPI mode, your your your, your MOSI pin, which is your data output from, S, from the SPI interface, is pin 23. Your clock here is pin 18. The backlight pin just goes straight to the free volt supply. And the other free pins, the CS, DC, chip select, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Those free pins, you can set to whatever pin you want that is valid on this controller. I set mine to 25, 26, 27 for a chip select, data command, and reset. But you can do it however you want if you so desire. This display here has a logic level converter on it, so it is fully compatible for five volts plus the display driver is regulated. But the backlight on this is not regulated, however. The default voltage maximum it can handle for the backlight is only three volts. But it is not that it is not as bright as it could be as for regular displays, but this has a sunlight readable lens on it. Sorry for my fingerprints. I always I like I like to do that because I don't know why. There's a sunlight readable lens on this. If you get a bright light, you can unplug the backlight or ground it. If, 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 if you don't ground it, it'll be all flashy and weird. But you, you can just look at it in the sun. If you put 5 volt on the backlight, however, it will be brighter. But eventually, it will get hot around down here and on the connector plug. So I would recommend not using 5 volts for too long. And now, since the code is finally done compiling, let's upload it. My wires are not really in best condition right now. They're kind of breaking on the inside, bending them so much. And now we got to select our port because I have a different port so I can for a different board. So you just port. And then you click upload. So we're going to wait for this here to upload. I got to be careful. I have a little computer hacker issue. Um, oh, don't tell me they reset the compiling on it again. Ugh. Gosh darn it. Oh, wait. Maybe not. I thought the computer hack could reset the compiling on this. They did they, this part didn't do it this time. Okay, it's gonna upload in a few seconds. Okay, it's uploading right now. And then the display worked perfectly fine. But it, it's upside down. Oops, I may have made a mistake. I thought the display was going to drive it to be upside down in the first place. I rotated it. But I was wrong. Uh, I'm going to have to go fix that. I made a mistake. I set the rotation. It defaults to sitting it upside down. But the display itself is mounted on the board upside down. So I got to re-upload this again. But as you can see, it's working just fine. This library even drives it better than the last library I showed you in my last video. It goes very fast. If you want to, you can add delays between each graphical operation. But and but it, it has a more drawing function than I think the Adafruit GFX library and the TFT ESPI library does. I think it just arcs and some other ones maybe. Okay, it's re-uploading the code, make it not upside down. 
I'm sorry about that. I'm fixing it now. And as you can see, it works very fine. It's running at 80 megahertz, which is the maximum display driver itself can handle. The ESP32 can go up to 100 megahertz, but the display can only go up to 80. And it's working. Now there's one cool thing this specific library has about it. That other that makes it better than other libraries for one reason. If you're using other libraries to make a display buffer using the ESP32, for example, like using Adafruit GFX, TFT ESPI, or other popular libraries that have very good optimization for the memory mapping, the highest you can possibly go in resolution is only for 240 by 240. One time there was a bug in an update that came out for the drivers, which made it 240 by 230. But it had been fixed recently. If I, but if I were to get the calculator here, the, 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 this controller has 300 plus kilobytes of RAM. But you can only use half of it. If I say 240 by, by 240, Oops, I typed it in wrong. Let me just do the touch screen, I guess. If I do 240 by 240 by two, of course, that is actually how much RAM it uses. That is only a third of the actual RAM the controller has. If you try to go above, the code will either crash or the light or the image will, never, will not render. It depends on what library you're using. Add it for a GFX for crash and TFT ESPI would just not render it. But for say, this library, you can go as high as 240 by 320. Of course, multiplying that by two to make up for 16 bit, which is two bytes. This is how much bytes it takes, 153 kilobytes for a, a 240 by 320 buffer. I don't have the buffer enabled on this, but it, it can definitely do this just fine. If you have a controller that has at least 500 kilobytes of RAM available, you can go up to 320 by 480. And not many controllers can do that. I only have one that can. But yeah. So that's gonna be about it for this video. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave a link to this video in the old video. Because I do not recommend watching using the library from the old video anymore. As it's now um, obsolete to me. Because this new one actually works better. And it's easier to work with. And and the graphic commands are similar to that of other libraries. And easier to work with. So thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope I helped you get this display working a second time. Because no one else has made a tutorial for this display. And so far, I'm the only one that has. So I'm making an updated version of it to make it better. So that will be the end here. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out and goodbye.